Greetings. This presentation covers Epicor Eclipse buy and sell group maintenance. Although Eclipse allows you to construct price matrices using a variety of different bases, the buy and sell groups is probably the most common method for constructing a price matrix. In Eclipse, uh, price matrices can be designed for both the buying and the selling, but honestly I've never seen anyone create a buying matrix. You typically just want to create a price matrix for selling your products to customers. Uh, the buy and sell groups were in the past typically based on the old trade service commodity codes and for some companies they may still use something like that. The reason why is because the trade service commodity codes grouped all similar products regardless of manufacturer into uh, a, s a similar set of codes and so that made sense to apply pricing from from that point of view. That's not so much used anymore because um, the commodity codes got corrupted. Um, trade service went from a four digit code to I think it's a ten digit code now um, and, and as it turns out because of the way manufacturers price things you really have a different pricing scheme based on manufacturer and not similarity of product. Anyway, once created the buy and sell groups are assigned to individual product records as a way of grouping the products together. Uh, before you do that, be sure that you have created the price lines uh, for the different uh, manufacturers of products before you go and try and assign the buy and sell groups. Buy sell group maintenance is accessed from the solar main menu and the maintenance submenu. The buy sell group ID can be just about any string of characters, but you've only got 10 characters to work with, so don't be too verbose. And of course, you can expand out the explanation in the description field. When you go ahead and generate mass load reports, then you'll have the nice uh, descriptions column to work with. The price line entry is typically either default or generic. Uh, if creating buy sell groups based on similar products, select a product record that represents uh, the class of parts. This is not strictly necessary, but may be helpful. And the rest of the fields are not normally used. About the only option that shows up in the uh, selection menu is the ability to create a rebate. Um, I do not know why this is here because you typically construct rebates at the customer level and I can't think of a reason why you would want to do it in a buy sell group maintenance level and I cannot find any reports in the clips that would allow you to use that information anyway to generate a rebate report. So don't use this. So let's go through a scenario on how to use buy-sell groups in a price matrix. Uh, before we actually get to the buy-sell group part, first we have to group our customers together into a pricing scheme. This is referred to as a price class or P-class. Uh, the price classes are created and defined in control maintenance. Uh, your system may use a different group. Uh, here are some common groups that I'm used to seeing, at least in my system. Uh, cash, small, medium, large, etc. Once you've created the price classes and control maintenance, then you can start assigning them to individual customer records. Uh, here you see an example that the price class small has been assigned as the default pricing class for this particular customer. Uh, in your uh, customer templates in your system, typically you're going to take whatever your, your smallest or largest markup uh, price class and assign that to the default template so that when new records are created by default it's the highest margin price class that you're creating. After we have the price class and the customer assigned to the price class all set up now we can go ahead and start creating our buy sell groups. Here's an example buy sell group. The group ID uh, on the surface looks completely illiterate at 30, 27, 24, 21 that could mean anything. Obviously I break out the description explaining what it is that group ID means. Um, what we see here is for each one of the uh, pricing columns that I've created for my pricing matrix, I've decided the uh, percentage markup for each price class and that's what it all breaks out to. After our buy sell group has been created, now we can go into a product record and assign that buy sell group uh, to the individual products. 
uh, as you can see here in the product group maintenance screen uh, for every branch that you have in your company you're going to have to apply the buy and sell group even though we're not actually going to use the buy group it's good uh, policy not to leave it blank and of course the buy and sell group should be the same group uh, but once again we're not using the the buy group so it doesn't really matter strictly speaking so we've grouped all of our customers together in different pricing classes we've grouped all our products together in different buy sell groups now we tie the two together using the uh, pricing quick sell matrix okay so in the nomenclature that we used in the example buy sell group uh, what it was constructed to read as is for all customers that are price class small when they buy that part they get a 30 percent markup from cost when they're medium they get a 27 percent markup from cost when they're large they get a 24 percent markup from cost when they're super large s large they get a 21 percent markup from cost uh, so red as such in the quick sell matrix is for customers assigned to pricing class p class use calc cost the calc cost is the uh, assumed to be purchasing price uh, plus whatever additional padding for freight charges um, uh, that's used as the price basis and mark up to a, a certain number for equaling a gross profit margin of such obviously uh, you don't if you want a 30 percent uh, profit you don't mark it up as 30 percent the calculation actually is uh, it's multiplied 1.4286 for a total gross margin of 30%. So as we see here, 30% uh, is 1.4286, 27% is 1.3699, 24% is 1.3158. And, and there we have our matrix constructed. In case your head was spinning way too much on that last slide, here is a much more simplified version of a uh, quick sell matrix on a buy sell group that just says I want a gross margin of 25 percent I don't care what class the customer is and so here you see the simple calculation of calc cost times 1.3333 for a gross margin of 25 percent as I've said before uh, Eclipse is extremely robust in how a pricing matrix can be constructed what you can use as the basis uh, whether you want to use absolute dollars or you want to use formulas uh, but before you go about constructing your system sh you really should settle on just kind of one scheme and stay consistent throughout all that or else you'll spend the rest of your career in hell trying to maintain a system that has got so many exclusions and exceptions that your your life will be a miserable mess If you're going to be the one that's going to be maintaining the pricing matrices in the system, I suggest you create yourself a little cheater chart. Uh, here in this slide you'll see the retailing formula for uh, calculating the gross margin percent markup. Um, and you can just correct, construct a little uh, cheater chart in Excel and stick that to the side of your monitor or wherever is useful. And additionally, there is an old freeware program out there on the internet called the Gross Profit Margin Calculator, or GPMC. And this is a handy little tool. Uh, I find it very handy because it gives me all of the numbers and all of the different ways that I need to see them uh, when I need to do a quickie. So this is pretty handy for me. And this concludes our presentation on buy-sell group maintenance. I hope this presentation has been useful for you. And as always, I am not Scott Zahn.